Hey everyone, and welcome to Modern Horrors 31 Days of Halloween 2016 on Build Environment. Last year I tried to do videos like this every day, but I just couldn't edit that fast, so this year we're going to be trying to do weekly videos covering six or seven movies, depending on how many we have a chance to watch before I uh, record on Thursday nights. Now, in past years, each week has covered a theme about the movie's setting, the type of monster, the director, etc. But this year, we're simply picking movies at random the night of, based on the streaming service they're available on. So we'll have a Netflix week, and then an Amazon week, a Hulu week, and then some shit from the DVD shelves here that uh, we just haven't gotten around to yet. So this week, we're watching some movies from Netflix. Now, first up is The Sacrament. Uh, it's Ty West's movie. He ventures once again into found footage horror and does a much better job this time. Uh, Ty West had done the second Honeymoon segment from the first VHS anthology, which wasn't one of my favorite parts of that collection. Just because it's probably not the best decision to get a director whose signature style is snow to direct a short film. But anyway, this movie is very uncomfortable to watch. The writing is stellar, and Gene Jones absolutely kills it as the socially manipulative cult leader. The, the confrontational interview that he gives midway through, and the, the way he monologues all, all the way through the end of the movie are just downright despicable. Very realistic sucker punch of a movie. Now, next up is The Secrets of Emily Blair. Now, it's been said many times that I am a sucker for possession movies, and apparently so are the creative team behind today's movie. Uh, Emily Blair, taking the name Emily from The Exorcism of Emily Rose, there's a character in the movie named Linda, for Linda Blair, the actress from The Exorcist. Linda's last name in The, ex in the Secrets of Emily Blair is also Regan, which is the first name of Linda Blair's character in The Exorcist. They just are all over this movie, and the whole thing is also told as a flashback by a jailed priest again, just like in The Exorcism of Emily Rose. However, beyond the references, it's just not that great of a movie. I mean, the demonic behavior and the dialogue is really quite good, but the acting was just a bit undercooked. And they also had a, a really interesting visual representation of Emily Blair's struggle against the demon, but the flashiness of it kind of undercuts the horror that was uh, that was in there in the way that the demon is tormenting the family. Third movie is Bleed. And this is one of those movies that kind of suffers from not really knowing what story it wants to have. It's got a pregnant couple in a haunted house thing, there's a childhood trauma thing, a haunted asylum thing, a cult thing, there are ghosts, there's gore. Well, actually, the gore, the gore is actually pretty good, but nothing else here really sticks. Yeah. I just don't have a lot to say about this one. Tuesday's movie was A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which is an American-made Persian language story about a young man chancing into a vampire stalking the fake Iranian town of Bad City. It's got a big French film noir art house feel with the, the music used, the black and white. Uh, there's lots of long shots, very high contrast, uh, silhouettes. Outside of all the, the murders and the criminal dealings, the, there's a, a strong romance plot, which is the main focus of the movie. It felt a lot like Let the Right One In or Let Me In, except with much more melodrama and less of a feeling of movement and resolution. It's a good movie, but a bit more art house drama with a vampire in it, and a few steps away from actually being uh, like a scary vampire movie. On Hump Day, we checked out the vaguely horror western Kill or Be Killed. Now, I kept hoping this was going to be a zombie movie, but then as it went on, I wanted ghosts. What I got was not what I wanted. It's actually a pretty straightforward western revenge story following a gang of outlaws as they rob and pillage their way across Texas, dressed up with fake supernatural elements. With a much more focused execution, I think it could have worked as what it was, using the supernatural elements as a misdirect. But here, everything wound up being a misdirect because the story couldn't figure it out exactly what mattered, so it just kind of followed the gang as they bounced amusingly from heist to heist, and it had its funny moments. Unfortunately, it's a very skippable movie. Though yesterday's movie claimed to be an Iranian western, but felt more like film noir, so at least we've got our western now. Now, Thirsty Thursday has been a double feature of Most Likely to Die and Fairlane Road. The Most Likely to Die is probably the most enjoyable traditional horror movie of the week. It's a pretty simple slasher flick about a killer dressed in a graduation gown, my high school colors incidentally, 
with a mask made from paper mache yearbook pages. And he's got he's got these great weapons in the form of a, a graduation cord for strangulation and a, a sharpened blade hidden inside of his mortar board. The kills here are all thematic and based on a person's most likely to vote as the killer stalks the yearbook committee the day before the, their 10-year high school reunion. I gotta say, I actually, I wouldn't mind a franchise with this guy. He's got a great design and a cool weapon. You just kind of have to get over that revenge killing bit. Fairlane Road, on the other hand, feels a lot more like a film school student's immediate post-graduation work. They feel the need to, to dress up a supernatural revenge plot with a big twist and all sorts of weird family melodrama, which it just didn't need. The movie actually got kind of fun when the leads stopped trying to act at each other, and this is another one of those movies where the leads are the writers, directors, producers, soundtrack artists. Most of the family is involved, but in this case it's not for vanity. It's actually not an entirely horrible movie. There was just too much pointless arguing that was unrelated to the actual story. If it had actually gotten to the point in the horror much faster, it would have been a lot better for it instead of feeling the need to dress up the horror. Anyway, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below. Please like and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next week. Happy Halloween!